Hey guys, today is Lucky 7. It's Lucky because we see each other in the office. Hey, we are together. Hello. Hey, Tommy. Let's start this one, but first, see the intro. Hey guys, hello again. Um, Tomasz, there was a week that you had your presentation on Warsaw IT Days, how it went. Yeah, it was uh, it was great. I'm really excited that I could take part in such awesome event. And uh, there was a lot of great, great, great presentations, not only a lot about... Of? Yes. Which one is your favorite? Um, so yeah, I did uh, watch a lot of presentations from different areas, like from blockchain, which is cybersecurity, but mostly I did focus on, obviously, front-end world and Obviously. yeah <laughs> and one of uh, the best the most interesting presentations for me was uh, yes browser can where we could find a bunch of information about uh, what the browsers can actually do and there was a lot of secrets that I was not uh, worried about previously so okay that's interesting I was like hoping that you would tell me that the favorite the favorite presentation will be about micro frontend. Come on, man. Uh, I don't want to, you know, be Promote really... Promote yourself, right? You yeah, don't want this. I don't want to be selfish, but uh, that was that what he said. So you know what is the best presentation. It is. <laughs> okay. okay, but for today's topic, we have five news today. Is it five? Yes, it's five news uh, from the front-end world. Um, we start with Fabric. Version 4.4.0. And next we go to... NSFWJS library, which I will explain later. What is it? And after that, we will jump straight to test into your idea. And the next one will be about the React hook form and its update. Okay, and the last one, it's the WebRTC that hit 10 years. Exactly. So let's get started. Let's get started. We are ready. Okay, Chris, so what's the first news? I already told. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I'm just kidding. Okay, <laughs> the so... first news is Fabric. Go ahead. Okay, so um, Fabric.js is a framework that uh, gives uh, an easy to use tools on top of the HTML5 canvas. It gives like the interactive object models. So uh, you can easily deal with, you know, creating, for example, shapes, polygons on canvas and program some, you know, uh, interactions with it or between it. Okay. okay. So the Fabric uh, received the new release, which is 4.4.0, which includes uh, some, you know, uh, fixes and uh, new features, which I recommend to check on your own in the release notes. What can I say more about Fabric is that uh, this tool was used by me, not in commercial project, but just just to test it and verify how it works and it's like you know easy as making sandwich oh really mm -hmm. so why we always use pixie.js or phaser uh, i think it's because uh, we are more familiar with the tools and um, i'm not sure because i didn't did not compare them uh, i believe that a pixie.js could be might be uh, more complex than fabric but this is something that that would be nice to check in the future so we can agree on i will check this out and we can discuss it on the next chapter so Tomasz, to sum up we have pixie we have pfizer we have fabric and we need to test performance between them okay so early early next week you post a url with those tests prepared by you so we have a conclusion for the next episode, right? Yeah, I think that is a good idea to compare those tools and check which one is most performance. So uh, I know, Chris, you want to hear that. I promise I will prepare the comparison of those libraries. Amazing. Great. Let's see next week. The next one was about new, I mean, not the new JavaScript library, but the one which we can use for multiple projects to like reduce administrator working time mm -hmm. uh, so we can filter like images and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. automatically so Tomasz what is it all about yeah we are going to speak about NSFWJS library which is not safe for work JS it means that we can filter 
the images to remove or blur the content that is not safe at all. For example, it contains some pornography and we want to block the user input from sending such images to our backend. And this is the solution built on top of the tensor on the TensorFlow, which is commonly used all over the world. So probably TensorFlow is well known for you, but this library might be something interesting. The link you can find in the description under this video and you can check it on your own. Exactly. Okay, Thomas, so the next news was about the test you can run in your reader, right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so I did found a really nice tool, which is like the news for me because uh, I did not meet anything like that before. It's called Walla, Wall ABJS, and uh, it might be a really interesting thing for you. So it helps to trigger your tests directly in your IDE. So uh, during you write your test, for example, for the component uh, written in React or you write unit tests for your logic, um, this tool, this library, will run the test directly in your IDE and display the result of the test uh, near the assertion or, you know, near the condition check. Nice. It's cool, man. I need to check it. Uh, and really, I recommend for you to check, check so it. You haven't too. checked it yet? Just in theory. Okay. Now it's time to practice, man. After this episode, I will just click the download button and use it in my IDE, which is Visual Studio Code. Okay, Tomasz, that was that was something new. Very nice advertisement. They pay me. They paid you. Okay, so let's go to the next news. I think we were about to talk about uh, React form hooks, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I believe most of you working with React uh, meet the problem with creating a really complex form. Uh, there are a bunch of tools on the market uh, you can use and integrate with your React application. And one of them are a React uh, hook form. This library was not updated like for last two years. It was at what? the same place. Yeah, they, they did years. not push anything. Exactly. And after two years, we received... But hooks are not two years old. Yes, they are. Come on, really? Yeah, it's it's two, two years. years. Yes, we are old, unfortunately, man. We are not getting younger. Oh, man. Two years. It would be... It will be good. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Go ahead. Happy. Sorry. I am <laughs> shocked. Me too, because like uh, I remember the first day where the, when they announced the hooks and I was like, wow, man, the new approach, how to work with React, it's fantastic. And it's over two years, man. So I cannot imagine how time is fast, really fast. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, uh, let's come. Let's go back to the topic. They put a new update for the React hook form, which includes tons of fixes and uh, some new features that I recommend to check because I believe you use the React hook form uh, in your applications. And yeah, just, you know, check it out, link in the description. But comparing to those two years, that was so quick. We have 10 years of WebRTC, right? Yes, uh, so in 2011, we received the tool that is called WebRTC. This technology is being used to deal with the real-time communication in your browser. So uh, imagine you would like to build a real-time video, video chat with you know anyone else yeah, who's using your app. You can adapt the WebRTC to achieve that. And after 10 years, after 10 years, finally in, in 2021, WebRTC become a standard in W3C and EATF. So we can use it almost in all modern browsers and it covers al almost like 95% of, of all, all of the browsers that are used commonly uh, in the web. So um, this is huge up date and um, this tool is finally become a standard become official uh, i believe we were using it often you know for years yeah and uh, that's it about the news from this uh, from last two weeks and that's it from the last two weeks uh, i believe the next two weeks could bring another bunch of awesome updates which i'm waiting for me too but today we still have some time to talk about curated project and tips and tricks. 
For the curated project, we're gonna talk about very cool one, which is messy messages. And for the tips and tricks, Tomasz will talk about. Yeah, uh, I'm going to show some tips about the code optimization when you deal with the React apps using Webpack. Sounds amazing, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, it's Curated Project O'Clock. Today, we're gonna show you one project that me and one more developer from Frontend House work on. It's called Messy Messages and it was done for Unit 9, Lace, but with Messy, yes, this Messy collaboration. Messy Messages is a deepfake experience allowing Messy's fans to generate their own personalized video message. We support a bunch of localizations, so go ahead and check if Football Star speaks your language too. Okay, let's go through the experience. So, we use chat interface to allow users to communicate with Messi and provide some key information about their plans. Let's go through the entire form. So, what's your name? It's Chris. Tofer, of course. Nice to meet you. My friend's name. So, let's maybe ask Tommy. Tommy K. As you guys see, each step has its own messy gestures recorded explicitly for this particular experience. Okay guys, I'm not a football star, but I play FIFA, so let's just fire up the console. And when? Maybe tonight? Okay, so that's it. We got our invitation for Tommy K, but guys, you know what? I won't show you how it works. Just go, enjoy it yourself and send your own personalized invitation to your friends. Hope you like it, feel free to invite me in the comments and enjoy the rest of the show. Cheers! Hello guys, this is another round of tips and tricks with me, Tommy K. Today we are going to focus on the React library and what I want to present to you is how to split our code so we won't have a single chunk, single file that contains all the application code, rather we will have something uh, granulized so we can decide when we fetch the particular code. What it gives to us? Let's say we want uh, to increase the loading time of the landing page. In the common approach with the React, if we use the single file approach, if user land on the landing page, the bundle will also include uh, the code that is inside the dashboard or inside the profile views. So let's see what can we do with, uh, with that case and how we can split the views to be uh, in a single separate files. Okay, so let me present at first what this application do. Uh -huh. Okay, so basically this is a really simple, simple React app. We have landing page, dashboard and profile. Uh, on dashboard and profile page, we've got a button that increase the counter by uh, default by one, or we can specif specify the value uh, we want to increase, okay? So uh, let's take a look inside the profile view for a while. As we can see, we are using the get random number library, uh, get random number util, which is really simple. Uh, so uh, I think I don't have to explain what's going on inside. We just get the random number, uh, multiply by 100 and, you know, return the, uh, the natural number. Cool. So uh, I have also created a simple reusable use counter hook that is being used inside the dashboard and profile view. And what has been done is uh, we have the button component, a really simple one, just to uh, present the idea behind uh, splitting the code. Uh, the whole application has been created with the Create React app, so uh, I think you are familiar with, with it. If not, just check it out on the internet. I have used the React Router DOM to uh, manipulate the, uh, to manage the routing, okay? I think that that makes sense, so 
React share with us some tools that can help us with the uh, code splitting. Um, before I will tell you about the tools, I don't know if you observe the detail, but uh, from now we do not have to define, uh, I mean, we do not have to import the React library. Uh, as you can see, uh, I didn't do this uh, in any components. So uh, this is something I mentioned in the previous frontend news, I believe, or maybe two chapters ago. Um, yeah, so uh, now it's a little bit easier to uh, to use the React boilerplate for, for the uh, functional component. Okay, cool. So uh, let's back to the uh, application component. Great. I mentioned that React support us with uh, tools to manage the code splitting and it's called lazy and suspense. This is something we need to import and um, the lazy, this is the method that takes a um, function as a param and this function should return the import promise which point to, to our file we want to import, our component. So how it looks in practice, let's check on the dashboard. Lazy arrow function import keyword and we want to import the dashboard view great let's do this for all of our views um, landing profile great but it's not the whole work we have to do um, what is the suspense so suspense is the React component that contains the logic um, that render the fallback component we pass as a prop until the ch child components will be resolved from, from the importing, yeah, from the loading. So suspense is waiting until we fetch the component code and during the wait time we display the fallback, okay? So for example, um, let's display something like that. Um, div page is page is loading um, on localhost. Probably we won't observe uh, the fallback UI for a long period of time, um, but on the production it may be observable. Depends on how big is the module we are importing. The example we have here is really simple, but um, yeah. Let's multiply this in your imagine by, I don't know, 1000 and imagine uh, what we can do with uh, such approach on a really big applications. But yeah, let's stop talking. Uh, just test this on um, our browser. Okay. So um, what we can see, we have uh, the profile page and we have the zero chunk, which represents this page. And if we are going to switch the row to the dashboard, as we can see, we have imported the, another chunk that contains the dashboard code. Same for the landing page. Okay, but go back to the code for a while. What to do if we don't want to have like, you know, numbered names, uh, we want to have something that is more understandable for the developer. Okay, so we can add our own name for the particular chunk. Uh, it's really simple. We need to use the webpack chunk name as a command and pass the name of our chunk, dashboard. And let's do the same for the other views so this is landing and this is profile great um, let's check this out yep now we have the landing chunk the dashboard chunk and the profile chunk okay so we know how to lazy load um, the particular view let's check what can we do with uh, more code splitting. As we can see, we are using the get random number util inside the profile view. You're wondering why I mentioned about it? 
That's because I want to show you how to use the getRandomNumber util on demand. It means the code for this library won't be included in the build until we trigger the particular action. In this case, it will be on click. So let's write our wrapper on that. On click, we need to use the dynamic import. So um, it's gonna be the import keyword. We need to point to the particular get random number. And what we get as a response is the object where uh, the default import is exactly what we need. It's our library. And let's use this library here. Okay, so um, we need to use the on click function. Just replace this. Great, and we do not need this import. Great, so uh, what we did is that we removed the import for the whole view and we import the get random number util when the user will click the button, okay? Does it make sense? Let's check this out. We are on the profile page and observe what will happen when I click the profile button. See, the chunk has been dynamically loaded and this chunk contains our code for uh, get random number. And yeah, the, another thing I want to show you is the shared import. Uh, it will be a simple example, but you can extend this on more advanced usage. So let's switch the button import from, uh, from the classic way and use lazy to import the button. And uh, let's put the name for the chunk at the beginning. Okay, great. And the button is being used on the profile page too. So let's switch the import to the lazy one. Okay, we need to import lazy. Yeah, I mentioned that we do not have to import React itself, but uh, if we want to use, uh, you know, hooks or anything that's inside the library, we need to obviously import this. Mm, cool. So we lazy import the button. And what we can observe, if we are on the landing, nothing special happens. We just fetch the landing chunk. And when we get on the dashboard, as you can see, we get the button chunk and the dashboard chunk. Okay, and on the profile page, we've got the profile chunk. When we click profile button, we fetch the uh, library. Cool, uh, the library does not include the name. Let's check if we can give uh, naming for, for this library. Okay, let's check this out. Yep, great. Everything works. Um, we have some extra code in here. This is because this is the dev version. Uh, let's check how the build output will look like. Waiting, waiting. Great. As you can see, we received uh, different files um, that will be used to cover our app and they will be loaded dynamically so uh, when you will land on the landing page, you know nothing about the button, about the dashboard profile or get random number because it does not being included in the landing chunk and it also not being included in the shared chunk, which is the main chunk because it is not being used between different views. Okay, does it make sense? So you can optimize the whole experience. If you're not using Gatsby or Next.js, uh, you can work on that. You can optimize the whole experience to uh, you know, display the landing page quicker because you won't include the code of the rest uh, of the application. 
This is really simple tip and uh, I believe you will apply this in your application because it really changed the game if we are talking about the bigger applications. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Guys, it was great to have you there. Check our website. Check our socials like YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter. And I believe that's it. And see you next week.